Welcome to ATV TV. They've brought in the big guns this week because Morg is still stuck in Hong Kong and Dancy's got no idea where he is. Hey, BJ, hold on a what minute. What the mate. hell? Hey, hey. BJ, it's me, mate. Well, I'll be gone. I'm back. Play was a bit late, but I'm back. Morgs, well, it's, it's probably handy, mate, because um, I didn't actually see any racing. Well, I was in Hong Kong. I didn't see many either. What do you do at the 11th? I thought it was appropriate that because Tiberian ran 11th in the Hong Kong Vars. So you see one race, mate. I did see one race, yeah. Well, now that I'm here, I'm going to give you a hand. We can go through uh, our runners for the week. No worries. Jump on camera. I'll hand, the, I'll hand the book over to you, mate. Oh, I didn't think I was going to get through security, BJ. <laughs> How come? Oh, just they looked to be a bit funny. Well, I've heard the, the, the old bars that uh, Phil Britton suggested to go to probably wasn't a good idea after all. Uh, I went to the chocolate bars. I don't know about any other bars. What bars <laughs> are you talking about, BJ? Uh, were, I think they go a little bit each way, these bars. You've got yeah. chocolate, all, all sorts of sweets. Well, here was Hong Kong, mate. I know you've been to many a carnival. You've been to Warrnambool, Melbourne Cup, Darwin. How's, Kong, how's Hong Kong compare? First time jetted out of Australia to a race meeting. Oh, no, that's a lie. I went to Tasmania on a footy trip once. But, uh, oh, mate... Great experience, um, forever indebted to Darren and Liz for giving me the opportunity to go along with about 14 owners and uh, we had a great time, obviously, as you mentioned, uh, Tiberian finished 11th, but I suppose there was always a query whether he'd, uh, fit, you know, Melbourne Cup run and then going to another country, whether, you know, he had another run in him and unfortunately he didn't and uh, that showed he was just flat and that was the, uh, well, sort of come out of the race from everyone, the horse, uh, sort of just uh, had done enough. He'd had a big prep, been in since about February, won four races and they had a good thrill and uh, just the fact they got to Hong Kong and the hospitality, Brian, unbelievable. The food. Do you like Chinese food? Better. Crayfish, we had everything. I felt like I was home, mixed in with some, uh, we had some market food. Yeah, no, it was fantastic and um, uh, look, we just had an absolute ball and you know, I think well, we all walked away saying, we took two and a half minutes out of the trip. The rest was brilliant. So, oh, uh, excellent. What was, it, what, was excellent. The, what was the whole life for you? Um, I just can't. The hospitality from the people, they just could not do enough for you. Obviously going to Sha Tin for the first time and, and the build-up to the race was brilliant. We actually felt like kings for about uh, an hour of the day, which was the lead-up to our race and just after being, being presented into the mountain yard and ushered through the crowd and... Uh, I think we all spoke the same, that it was just, you felt like you were put on a little bit of a pedestal there for a little while and uh, you yeah, were quickly deflated not yeah. long after the gates opened. Great atmosphere, they tell yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. No. And if there's one thing you could take away from Hong Kong racing to bring back to Australian racing, what would it be? Yeah, look, it's um, obviously because they own both tracks and it's all very, uh, what's the word, templated or organised, but they give the owners everything like uh, we were treated like kings and you felt like you are an owner. I think, I'm not too sure whether we miss out a bit with our owners back here and what we can do for them. Um, I know we've got great racing and we've got a lot of racing. It's ball to wall 24-7 and they're only two days a week. But gee, the way the owners were looked after, and not just us, but everyone you've seen in the room we're in. Um, it's all about the owners too, isn't it? Really? Second to none. When it's all said and done. Yep, yep exactly. Well, BJ... We better let you tee off here in the 11th. Well, I'm going to let you tee off because Darren Dance played a game of golf yesterday and they told me he had more hits than the Beatles. He told me he broke 100, but then he told me he had 12 holes to go. <laughs> so uh, I don't know if that adds up. There's a test yeah. match on today. He might have been better playing cricket he's, with the score like that. He was telling me he ran around 78, and I said, how do you go on the back nine? <laughs> well, I know, well, we'll get this out of the road, and then we'll, uh, we'll get on the rest of ATB down there. Hopefully not in the scrub, but somewhere on the fairway, no, Brian. Plenty of fairway there, mate. Impressive stuff, BJ. What do you got there to the hole? Uh, it's probably about 120 feet. Bit, bit of wind, a bit of wind, but what would you pick up there? Probably log wedge for me, mate. All right, well, I might just pull the chainsaw out of the bag and uh, mine's over there somewhere, BJ. Somewhere about there. Have you played with dancing much? Um, it's generally where he goes. Is that where he goes? So there should be a track there for me. Hmm, BJ, what kind of club will I use for that, mate? Well, it's almost unplayable, mate. I'd probably use your foot. I don't know whether I need a McCulloch or a still. Well, it's still uh, going to be there if you're using McCulloch. <laughs> or I could use my hands and just throw it back on the fairway. That's my well, rule. I'll show you a dancy move. This, so, is, what, this is what dancy does. Do? Oh, clever. 
Actually, that's what a that's a bit better than one of Dancy's shots. He yeah, normally throws it a bit further. Does he? Oh well. At least he's got a reasonable lie there. Oh, I have. So you got to be happy with that, mate. Yeah, just done. Any rig mugs? Sorry, mate. Oh, Dancy's just phoned in. Ten to one. We'd have to have twenty on that, wouldn't we? What? Taken. I'm going to do. Yep. I'm going to look away. Mate, you'll probably give me 15s. It looks like I'm a wreck. It's in the hole. It's in the hole. Hey, I'm fine. Oh, BJ, just pulled over. That's hot work, that golf, mate. It is. That's right. I got the cart, mate. It's a hot day, too. Just nice and relaxing. That wouldn't get much weight off me, a cart, though. But the way you the way you hit the ball, you're going to be walking a lot into the trees. So. Yeah, and I'm not fond of snakes either, so <laughs> they might make me run a bit. Anyway, mate, we might just flip back through the races. Neither have seen many races during the week, but I think we'll be able to... We had a couple of running. I had Karaganarian on um, Saturday. It's had a pretty good prep, actually, Karaganarian, but yep. it looked pretty... Uh, it, looked, it was well ridden by Craig Green. It's just off the pace and then just but, found nothing in the straight, but I think they couldn't work out what was wrong with it. I think David Hayes sort of might have bled from him. Yeah. But it just dropped out, and then uh, I think Craig just sort of let it... Um, looked after him. Looked after it. Yeah. He's, he's gone out for a spell, but he's picked up a bit under 20k in prize money this time in. So he actually went through it. He, I think his last six starts, 120 of his 150, and he's gone from a benchmark 60 to an 80 rider. And obviously, uh, it was a big thrill on Oaks Day without winning Brian. And oh, the, exactly, yeah. And the Mooney Valley win was a hundred thousand dollar race. brother to catch you, so he's got a bit of ability. And I dare say you'd be probably better in the autumn and yeah, when a bit, bit more experience because he knows he, he had that um, win problem early. And they've worked him so out they've now, worked him out, racing so. style. It's funny, like, the racing style now, he's got confidence. He went to the front at Flemington, he was he was good as well. So hopefully he's solid, he? very rounded horse now. So you should have plenty of fun with him in 2018, BJ. Yep. You also go back to the day before you had Bloodlet. Now, we know that she's got to be better when we get to 2000. Um, Stall run was a little mystifying, but it's not the sort of track for her. No, it's not. Well, the wise man once said, I think it was the day after actually, <laughs> that um, like a half a half sister or a Group One winner probably should be racing in yeah. better races, or you're better off running last. You're better off getting beat nine lengths against a good field. Yeah. Well, really. Did speak to Darren this morning, or we're gonna Darren Weir's keen for her to go to 1850 at Kitten, which is Saturday week, and then. We're going to plot some uh, midweek races in town over 2,000 or better. Good idea. Yep, so we can beat a half to platelet, well related, and we can get a win on the board for her. She becomes a valuable broodmare. She does. Condover Hall ran its stall as well, and this is one of the women's racing horses, and a much improved effort from the master craftsman. He led um, over the mile, and it took one of Weary's to run him down late. Michelle Payne... Uh, very happy, very relieved, as are the owners a little bit more excited because he'd put in three runs there where he'd only be one or two home. So hopefully he's back on track, mate, or yeah, on just, track. It's just sometimes patience is a big key, and especially like drier tracks. It's yeah. A bit wet there for a while, so some horses don't handle it and some yeah. horses improve. Exactly. But look at Craig and he, was, like, he well, was struggling at being 58. Back in June, we didn't and, know where we were going. And Cup Day comes out and runs second. Yeah. So you just got to give him time. That's right, especially the staying, the ones with uh, staying bloodlines in him and he'll go to a 1950 metre race at uh, Yarra Valley on f the Friday before Christmas so the ladies might have a little bit to cheer about there hopefully. Uh, same day as we're back on the Sunday as Craig and Air we had Equieto kick off his campaign with Paul Prushka at Border Town. Only well, beaten less than two legs, ran fourth. Um, I did see that run actually. He was, yeah, he, he stuck on OK. Stuck on at the fence. It looked like in the straight, looked like he was going to loom up, but he just, uh, the, last, what, the last 100 metres, he just yeah. plotted away. Um, Holly did say there was a f wet patch somewhere around the 400 that just took him out of his nice rhythm, but look, I think they'll look for a 1200 metre race, and hopefully he's not far from winning. Ran some money. Um, Dancy loves it when the jockeys admit they do something wrong. And Dean Yandel got off and said he should have held the lead and he might have won that race, so that probably tells the story. Beaten fifth, oh, sorry, beaten less than two lengths, ran fifth. And uh, a bit like the Hong Kong streets, Brian, there wasn't much room for him to push through there late. <laughs> so uh, we've waited another day for ransom money. Unfortunately, there's been a few stories like Actually, this. Actually, funny tweet, uh, Dean Yandel on Twitter, someone said something about one of his yeah. rides and... He yeah. wrote back and said, yeah, the trainer said the same thing. It's yeah, he agreed. Yeah. So he might be having a bad week. Left you nowhere to go. <laughs> no. We spoke about Tiberian. Uh, he, and just to round off that, he now goes back to England where he spells. Um, I'm not sure how long he'll get. 
the vet will go over and once he's settled down the paddock for a while and uh, then they'll be busy trying to map out a plan for him. So it's all ahead of him in 2018. Just while you're on that, race, how did they, what was the applause like for Highland Real after the race? Yeah, look, magnificent horse. And um, I'm, I don't know, the 110,000 people there, I reckon, uh, ought to be 90,000 of the locals were on him because he was one of the favourites and they love launching into a favourite over there, PJ. It's staggering to think that he couldn't get within five and a half lengths of yeah, wins in the Cox Plate. Exactly, and he's, I think he's, I'm not sure if it's. 10 group ones or whatever and 73 million Hong Kong is one. Got a huge re- got a great record. Yeah, no, and he, he stood out experience-wise in that field and Julie got the chocolates. Tuesday, we had no runners Monday. Tuesday, we thought we had a nice little team at Warnable, but uh, things didn't quite go to plan. We had PK, I don't know if you've seen that race. No, Brian. I didn't see any at Warnable. Four-way finish, he got done a half head. It was a half head by nose and a nose. Um, the rail was off that day and we had two horses draw barrier one and unfortunately... Geordie Charles did everything he did, he, he could do, he got off the fence, but the winner just had the momentum down the outside and you know, another 10 yards might have made it interesting, but uh, PK's running well without winning. It's a bit of a theme, Brian, with our, with our horses. Artie Sano also drew one and he ended up, uh, this was over a trip, he got shuffled back um, to about three or four back on the fence and same thing, Hong Kong streets. A bit uh, congested. Johnny Allen did his best to get through, but again, the winner, ridden by um, Melissa Julius, who's the sister of pre-trainer Josh, that does a lot of work for us. Uh, Dancy, quite happy to say she outrode Johnny Allen. <laughs> so we missed out there. Two other mares ran, both ran down the track. Our approach in Tennessee Gold, and unfortunately, the uh, breeding buns, the best we can offer them. We've uh, decided to retire them. They just, they haven't come up, BJ. Yeah, it's not good, mate. Well, the breeding man's really the way to go. I noticed um, seeing impending when when third in the Daly Classic. Yep, yep. And it's um, little sister one at Rosehill a couple of weeks ago, and it's related to the Exosphere Burn Burn Dini Burn foal that's probably going to sales next June. So yeah, you're um, good signs. You uh, enjoy the breeding side of it with ATB. Yeah, it's, it's been good so far. Darren's sort of got a knack of picking good mares and. Yep. Uh, good, good mares and good families, and the families, as I saw, impending. Ran, it's won a Group One and ran third in a Group One behind. Um, probably a pretty good field too, so it's a lot of value to the mare. Yeah, you uh, were involved in the Chocolicious sale a couple of yeah. seasons back, and and they got a in, in Toy Moon. It's in Fold of Franklin. Got another Fold yep. of Franklin. So yeah, like Highland Real could even. He's going to he's going to stud over there as well. I so see that he's retired now. Yeah, could be yeah. an option to send Toy Noon to him over there. Yeah, no, it's certainly another facet of racing that. Um, I've seen over the last six to twelve months that a lot more people are getting in, and uh, I think it's nice too. If you, it depends whether it's commercial or whether you want to race them, but it's nice to actually be involved with one from the moment it's first hit the ground to race day, and and then to be winning as well. I can only imagine to be, um, you know, That's something great. special. Look, yeah. I'd sort of recommend if you're going to get into one, perhaps get into a filly with the, yeah, and hopefully if it's well bred or got good breeding, you could when it finishes racing, you can yep send it to a stallion and breed from it as well, so you can keep going. You probably make more money. You really race for fun and yeah, breed for money. Yeah, exactly. If you're lucky. Anyway, um, we'll continue on now that we've diverted off to the breeding side of it. That's, we're all going to be bred somewhere. Breeding is, breeding is a lot more fun than racing. Yeah. <laughs> Captain Harry, we thought we are going to Mornington just to break his maiden and uh, gee, he ran into a fair bit of trouble. I don't know if he was going to be, he wasn't going like a winner, but about 300 out, Brad Willer got nine days for giving him two solid shirt fronts that uh, Dustin Martin would have been proud of. They were all, almost like big fendos. Anyway, he, he he's going to the spelling paddock now and, and uh, decision on whether we gold him. Not that he's a roguish sort of horse, but 10 start maiden. I don't think there's a future there as a stallion. He ran second behind Peaceful State. The thing of weirs, he got beat, just beaten in the Guineas, and he ran third in the Vovis uh, Gold Race, Ballarat Cup Day. So we thought we had the right form to win a maiden, but it's not that hard. Not it just that, doesn't pan out, does it? No, nah, it's not that easy to win a maiden anywhere now. So uh, unfortunately for his owners, uh, we missed out, but I'm, he'll be winning races next time. A lot of horses. Um Started up. Look, well, Carragher, he was like there for a while, didn't win for a little while. I yeah. won, but then it didn't win for a while and come good. Yep. Had a few like that. You just got to. Patience, Brian. Just time, experience. You've got to trust that the trainer puts him in the right race. Yeah, that, that's it. Trying to win. That's look, it. I think he only got beat two lengths anyway, two and a half lengths. 2.2, so yeah. It's, it's only. And the, and the wax probably cost him a length. And uh, yeah, old Bart said, patience is free, but not too many invest in it. <laughs> we uh, 
our run is coming up, Ron. We haven't got a lot. The only one I've got for certain that's accepted is Galileo's Pearl tomorrow night at Mooney Valley, and I'm going to take Beck and the kids there and have a look at him. Third up, Mickey Kent. Um, first run, he's just a duffer. Second, he improved. And Michael Walker to ride? Yeah, we've drawn 10. It's an awkward gate, 2,050, but he's there to run well. Uh, but I'll just co keep following him after this run because there's a lot of races there at Mooney Valley and Cranbourne that'll suit him. But uh, I think he's a sneaky each way chance. Walker's one. Well, I hope so. Three or four on him. So An interesting uh, character too, Mike Walker. Isn't he? he is. I don't know whether Dance is going to get like sent him a Christmas like New Zealand, card. New Zealand Dean Yendall. <laughs> yeah, <isn't he? laughs> that's not a bad way to put it. Yes, uh, and then coming up, Brian, just quickly, they're all nominations. I just better check, make, make sure no one's coming down the fairway. Mate. I haven't heard four. Well, I thought I heard Dante coming down, but I wasn't, I wasn't going to worry about being on the fairway. Was that just so, that air swing without the ball strike? I've got to fly me. Uh... <laughs> yes, Dante in his golf. Um, yeah, they're all nominations. Monday, Mr. Moneybags, he's a he's a uh, written tycoon, three-year-old that's knocking on the door. He's nominated for a chuka. Timmy G. Joe's nominated for Kilmer, but she won't go there. She's a little bit scratchy after her last run. Artie Sano um, nominated for a 2,400 metre race at Sandown. Um, whether he goes there, that'll be an eight-day backup. So, again, it just depends on how he's pulled up. And just going further on, I mentioned Condova Hall. She's next uh, Friday, so I've sort of gone into the next jurisdiction of ATV TV. And... There's probably a couple others there, but I'll know a little bit more tomorrow with some of those exceptions. So check the website, you're saying, have, if you want to know. Look on the screen now. That's got them, Brian. That's nailed them. Well, mate, it's good to catch you. All right, catch thanks, Morbs. You, um, you too. Yeah. Good to see you come back safe and well. And I'll get home. I'll get the no, around. No illnesses or diseases or anything uh, like that? So. Not that I've felt, seen or looked at yet. No, I all got back, sort of caught up with a bit of sleep for the last day and a half. People going on about jet lag and I never believed them but I think I had 12 hours last night so there's something in it. I went over to Hong Kong once to study origami and I come back a black belt. <laughs> Alright uh, BJ we'll put a sign out now and we'll have uh, D dance back in some form next week so uh, that's it so that's all from me. And that's all from him. <laughs>